G'day, hi, and welcome. All right, so what I got here is a gaggle of violins and my dog, a very bored dog. Better poke her to make sure she's still alive. Oh, yeah, she's still alive. She's still kicking. Just bored, that's all. Nothing to worry about there. And we might as well go see if the other two gaggle heads are around. Where are they? Yeah, there's one gaggle head. He's on, he's on a diet right now. I don't know what the other one is. Hey, cause you. Hey, buddy. Poor guy, starving to death. Hey, putting you on a diet like that. All 25 pounds of you. Yeah, that's why you're on a diet. You little piglet. So he only gets food in the morning, food at night. Because if not, he'll just sit there and eat all day. He even eats the dog's food. Poke, poke. Anyway. Okay, so today's video is about something, although you weren't around to see it. Because my brother has now stole the lawn tractor very slowly uh, to go and cut the grass over at my, his place. My grandmother's old place. And while he was stealing the lawn tractor in the shed over there. I said, hey, listen to some of these violins and tell me what you think. So I came out on the step with this one uh, first, which uh, under my ear, it's the loudest violin I've ever heard in my life. It's just, it, this thing vibrates my head, uh, that type of thing. And I said, this one's going to kind of punch in the face. He says, yeah, it feels like the sound was coming straight at him. And yeah, kind of like, here's my violin. And then I played this one, my ever so lovely line head violin. Um... And he said it sounded like it was behind him. Uh, it, it, like it, it just kind of like enveloped him, but it, it said it sounded like it was like completely behind him, like the way it projected. Then I played, I think, the Stradivari, 1713 Stradivari copy. And he said that one was weird. He said, because he was in, the, in, the, in the, the garage, he said it sounded like the steel was resonating around him. So, so it sounded like it was in, like completely surrounding him. And then I played this one. He said, this one sounded more like uh, it was quieter, but it sounded like it was kind of like, here I am, right in front of his face kind of thing. Um, so it was weird how each one of these violins projected. Under my ear, this is the softest sounding one. The, under my ear, this is the quietest one. Under my ear, this is the darkest sounding one. And under my ear, this is the loudest one. Uh, the loudest two would probably, and under my ear, would be either this one and this one. Or this one, yeah, I guess this one, these two would be the loudest under the ear. Uh, the softest sounding under the ear is that one. Uh, the um, kind of like brightest, kind of really kind of uh, ambient soft one is uh, this one soft as well. But I asked him which ones he liked the sound of the best. Strangely enough, he said the ones that had the nicest, nicest tone, he said it was either this one or that one. He couldn't figure out which one he liked better. And to me, from under my ear, the ones I find sound the best is this one I find sounds the best. A lot of it has to do with the string setup on it. And this one sounds the best uh, to under my ear. But he said that one sounded the best uh, or that one. He wasn't sure. He says because th th they sound different, right? So it's like, what do you like better? What, what's better? Uh, tomatoes, apples oranges or hammers right <laughs> so you just can't get a, a you know it just you know what did you like better kind of thing so that that's subjective but what was interesting is how the sound went around him so standing on the step here while he was stealing my dad's lawnmower he's just borrowing it he'll bring it back um that one again sounded like it was right in front of him enveloping him kind of bah, i'm here like uh, this thing really said threw off a lot of volume a lot a lot of volume very powerful sounding violin um, he said that one sounded like it was actually coming out from behind, the sound was coming from behind him, uh, and, and enveloping him that way. This one, it sounded like the, the walls were vibrating with the steel. Uh, like you said, it was like, you could hear it in, in, in the, in the walls, uh, the, the, that one. And then this one, he said it found, it felt like it was just right in front of him. And distance, I guess would be about 50, 50 feet 50 60 feet maybe from the step to well maybe yeah probably more like 40 or 50 feet uh from the uh there's my other gaggle head right there there's missy missy you bad little cat what are you up to so i was standing right about here he was standing just inside there but he said like he, the way he could hear hear the the sound project uh and he said each one sounded like like i was right beside him so uh, very cool. So what's the point of this video? I guess one thing you can do is let's say you got a violin that you're going to record with. Well, you record them all. 
And what you'll find is one's going to come out sweeter than the other one. One's going to come out a little louder. One's going to come out a little more mids, more dark, more bright, whatever. And you find that that way. And you can easily tell that because you can put the headphones on after you've played it and recorded it. And you can play it back and there you go. You, you can pick, easily pick which violin is going to be your best recording violin. Now, when you're playing live, the problem is, is you can't be over there while you're over here playing. So then you need somebody to go over there and either play you uh, you play the violin and you do the very unscientific scientific test that I just did um, and say what you know which one did you you know how did it affect you like how did the sound get to you uh, did it, and my brother is not a violin he's not a musician at all but even he could tell the differences between each violin um, the other thing is to get somebody else to play your violin for you and you stand over there somewhere and when then you could hear that I haven't done yet and I, I, I want to do that I want to get somebody who, who knows how to play fairly well and get them to play all four of them uh after today I might say all three of them because I might be getting rid of this one in about an hour or two I'm not too sure uh the only one I won't ever sell I don't think is this one uh my two best playing ones is this one and this one technically I would say this one actually plays better than this one in some ways it's just it's easier the, the way the neck is but this one is one of the best violins I've ever played in my life. And I'm not a great player, but I can make sound on it. So, uh, Plus, I love the look of it, too. Uh, it's, that one's the whole package for me. That's the, uh, the blonde brunette redhead uh, all uh, mixed into one. You know what I mean? Like it's just, she's perfect. <laughs> you know, the happy lion head violin. Uh, that type of thing. Uh, but for playability, if I were going to gig, I would probably use this one just because it plays so well. Uh, even if it might not have the best sound, it, you know, it's always that trade-off where some violins will play better, some will sound better. Sometimes you get a best combination of both. Uh, oh, just my cousin. Um, and other times, you know, it's like the search goes endless uh, to the end of your life, and just as you find the perfect violin that sounds exactly the way you want it, it plays exactly the way you want it, and everything's perfect on it, you're old and you die. So, uh, you know, so you might as well just own a whole bunch of them and, and, and just keep going from there. Because <laughs> yeah, the search never ends. There's no such thing as the perfect violin. Um, there's always compromise. Uh, what do you have to live with? What don't you have to live with? Uh, but the variety also makes a, a difference, too. If I could only keep one, it's only, obviously it's going to be this. This violin here, just because of the uniqueness of it and everything like that. And I've showed it off many times. Love this thing. Uh, that's probably a proc up violin. I don't know because the, there's no label left in this one, but it's around 100 years old. Um, came from the Czechoslovakia when it was Czechoslovakia. Um, very, very thick, meaty violin uh the stradivari i'd probably if i could keep two i'd probably just keep these two this would be i think a great uh gigging violin or concert violin however you want to look at it. this one does have label this one was built in czechoslovakia not czech republic so it's pre-1954 1956 we're talking soviet empire uh white uh, eastern Bloc, uh warsaw pack stuff <laughs> um but that one, I think, it, uh, because it's such a good player, I think it'd be good live. And one thing that's interesting about this one, unlike all the other ones, uh, there's no extra tuners on this one. Ah, my bow. Yeah, that, that's how you take care of your bow. Make sure you knock it on the ground like that. Um, I did refit the pegs. Now, this thing holds tune like you wouldn't believe. I tuned it up, I think, last year. And I've only had to retune it a few times. And I got cheaper strings on there. But I, that one, if I put better strings on, I think, well, all of them, if I put better strings on, I'm sure they would all brighten up a lot. This one has a Priestrio Gold E on it. I don't know what these are. These were on that violin. They're okay sounding. This here has uh, Preludes on it, which I'd love to hear this violin with really good uh, violin strings on it. But if I'm going to sell it, I don't know if I'm going to do that. This has the Lorezin uh, Virtuosos. I couldn't think of them the other day. Excellent sounding string for this violin. This is a uh, hodgepodge or something. Uh, old dominance, maybe uh, one might be a... Uh, one's a prelude. I, I think the E's a prelude for, for sure because I replaced it on that. Uh... Yeah, so it is what it is. Um, so if if you have old violins too, also uh, if you get the right strings on there, it could really change the dramatically change the sound of your violin. Um, tone wise, I think this is the, one of the most tone rich out of them all. Uh, but this one's brighter than that one. I don't know. It's really hard to say which one is the best at uh, 
uh, how, you know, you'd have to play a whole bunch of them in the room and have somebody to critically tell you which one would be the best to perform in that whatever room it is you're in, um, that type of thing. So anyway, that's just a little uh, video on uh, how violins project their sound and how to choose the best violin for playing live or, or recording or whatever. Just something you can, a little experiments you could do. Uh, yeah, like I say, A, record it, see which one you like to sound the best for recording. B, go uh, see which one you, you plays the best for you. The one that plays the best for you is probably the one that's going to sound the best anyway. Um, that type of thing. And or get somebody else to play your violin for you while you stand over at a different area. And then they can just from there tell you, or you can hear for yourself which one you like the most, what effect you'd be going for. All right, there anyway, I'll leave it at that. So have yourselves a great day. Eh?